Fernando, welcome to the cave. And thank you for Hi. joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Exciting time for you. Just had a new show on Apple TV Plus, Acapulco. <laughs> yes. How, uh, pretty, how's that? How's, how's that whole feeling about this so far? You know, I, I mean, from the few things that I've been able to see on social media of people reacting to it, I'm really excited and really happy because everyone seems to enjoy it so far. So we're excited. We're happy. I mean, it, it's been the job of a lifetime. And I can't wait for people to keep seeing how far this story goes and where, where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to we, uh, to we talk a little bit more, but before we start that, um, you know, like, uh, you, you got into the acting world and everything, like what made you decide to get into like the storytelling business of it? Like, what made you say, this is what I want to go do? Well, I was very blessed to, um, both of my parents were actors, you know? Okay. Um, so I've been exposed to art, whether it's music, dance, um, paintings, et cetera, et cetera, my whole life. Um, mm. And I've known since the age of three that I wanted to be a performer. Wow. Uh, whether that was a singer, actor, dancer, anything that involved, you know, storytelling through movement, mm. uh, music, uh, acting, anything. Uh, and then uh, I started training at the age of seven, but I've always known, I've always known, I feel like um, since a very young age, I knew that that was my purpose on this earth. Mm -hmm. So how, what was one of your first projects when you first started? Oh, my God. So back in Mexico, I, I was born in Mexico. Um, the first thing that I ever did is I was part of this theater company that was like educational. Um, they, did, they, they put like educational shows. So I did a lot of like original work in Mexico. Wow. Um, and we would tour. It, it was crazy because we were all kids and we would tour around our state, taking the show all over the state in different small cities mm. and we had a radio show that would air weekly. We recorded original cast albums. Um, now that I look back, I'm like, oh my God, that seems like a lot. And we would train on top of that Monday through Friday and then perform on the weekends. So um, that was my very first thing, uh, original wow. work through educational wow. theater. Now, are you still in Mexico or did you make the jump to like LA or New York to continue on with this? I actually, I made the jump about eight years ago when I was 15. Um, okay. So I finished high school here. Okay. And I, 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 um, I got my BA here. Uh, I went to community college first and I, and then I transferred to UCLA wow. and now we're here. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, what were like some of your, like your favorite, like, uh, movies and TV shows that even pushed you more to this? Well, of course, watching Mexican telenovelas was a huge part of it. You know, we, if you're yeah. Mexican, you grew up with all of those. But uh, beyond that, I was a huge fan of Disney Channel. So okay. I actually admire like um, Raven Simone, for instance. I think that was my first glimpse about, through, I mean, I'm sorry, my first glimpse to what comedy really was. Mm. And I mean, she's so, she's so talented and she has been since such a young age. I feel like that was my first experience to what like a sitcom is and, okay. and comedy in, on TV. Wow. Do you hope someday you can try to get into the Disney as well? You know, I would do anything with Disney. <laughs> to be completely honest with you, I would love either with, whether that is like um, dubbing a character or, or, right. or doing, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever they want, I'll do it. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I always had this fantasy as a kid to perform, not like as a Disneyland performer, but they would have like the TV specials where they would bring the celebrities to perform at Disneyland. Yeah. That was always my dream as a kid. So yeah. Even now. You well, you mentioned like even like the voiceover, but that would be like great. Everybody wants to do a cartoon voice. I know. I would I would love to do it, to be completely honest with you. I feel like it's such a I don't know. It would be cool to be part of the legacy of such a wonderful company that creates such wonderful content mm. for families. You know? yeah. So yeah, let's talk about your new show, uh, Apple TV Plus. It premiered about two weeks ago, uh, Acapulco. How did you uh, get approached for that? Like tell us the process for that. So uh, my managers initially uh, were able to give me this audition and it was a fairly quick process, but it was just your typical audition process. You know, you submit a self tape and then you go through a callback, a chemistry test. Um, you know, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less yeah. steps to follow. And then you book the part. I think the crazy part about it was that it happened six months after I had graduated from college and in the middle of a world pandemic so <laughs> that's uh, the interesting twist on that yeah. story but it was you know uh, it was it, it was exciting and it was nerve-wracking the fact that it happened mm. so quickly after I graduated college but it was your same old story you know you, you audition and then you go through the process 
<laughs> now, did you um did you go for your like your character for Memo when you first uh, auditioned for this, or was it for a different character at first? It it, it was always for Memo. Okay. Uh, it was pretty. I, I remember reading the the audition notice. And when I read Apple TV bilingual with Eugenio Derbez, I went, oh my God, like this sounds so exciting. Like it sounds like, a, like Apple's taking a big risk with a project that's bilingual, you know? And yeah. it was exciting from the beginning. And then as I read the sites and, and the script, I'm like, oh, this is so wonderful because they're putting the Latinx community in a very positive light. And the character that I would be submitting for, you know, he's the comedic relief and he is a plus size character that doesn't, it's like, the comedy doesn't come from his weight. I'm like, this is like the dream job to, <laughs> to have because it, 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 the, the representation was so authentic and so being done so respectfully yeah. that I was like, ooh, this would be really cool. And thank God it happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the great thing about Apple TV is like, you know, they're pushing out content, but it's slowly. And it seems like every time they're pushing something out, it's gold. Yes. So far. I mean... They're definitely, I, it's a brand new streaming service. So they're still trying yeah. to, you know, set the ground and, and, and get, get going. Yeah. So they might not have a lot of content in comparison to other services, but their content is really high quality. And I think it's pushing a lot of boundaries that need to be pushed. Uh, and it's creating spaces for people that no one else has, has created. Mm -hmm. Like Acapulco is a bit of a pioneer show, you know, people, it's funny because I see people comparing it to other shows and I'm like, I, I can see that. But at the same time, it's like what we're doing and the way that we're doing it has never be, been done before, you know? So oh. we're grateful uh, that Apple gave us this, this space. Yeah. Uh, for the listeners and the viewers, can you tell us a little bit about what the show is about? And you said that it was compared to other shows. Well, I'm interested to know what shows has it been compared to. Um, bueno, okay, so Acapulco uh, is the story of a young 20-year-old called Maximo Gallardo who gets the job of a lifetime at the highest, most amazing resort in Acapulco in the year 1984. What this kid doesn't know is that his job that he has always dreamed of Entitled, entitled, entitled um, to do more things than he thought he was supposed to do. Mm. Um, and he discovers that not everything that shines is gold. Uh, and the whole um, plot of the story is basically he's trying to do the right thing while still moving ahead and, and provide for his family. Um, it's, a, it's loosely inspired on the film, How to Be a Latin Lover. Um, very loosely, but it's, it's a show with a lot of hard... Um, a beautiful story about dreams, about um, fighting for your goals, about caring for others and loving one another, helping one another succeed. It's about unity and it's a, a universal story. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that it reminds them, reminds it of um, Jane the Virgin or apparently the show, which I've never seen, I'm going to be honest with you, Red Oaks, I believe, from Amazon Prime. Um, those are the ones that I, I've seen the most. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> how, fun, how fun is it to play a character in 1984? It's a lot of fun. I mean, I do think the 80s is one of the most iconic decades, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the fashion, the music, the hair, even the technology of the time is like <laughs> no other, you know, like it's so yeah. unique. And so there's a reason why people, everyone wants to do an 80s theme party or an 80s theme TV show, you know, it's just yeah. such a, an exciting era. Um, and what was so cool is that our entire creative team, they were my age when they were, when, uh, and during the 80s. So they had mm. a very authentic experience to share with us through the, their props and, and the set design and the costumes, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of, yeah. I get to play with a lot of props. So that was exciting. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about your character. Like how, how do you describe him and how did you prepare to play this role? So um, Memo is Maximo's best friend, the lead's uh, best friend uh, and number one supporter. Um, he's a very naive kid who's discovering this world alongside his best friend. Um, so that's why he's a comedic relief because he might yeah. not be making the smartest choices, but everything comes from a place of love and heart and care. Um, and honestly, the way that I prepare for him is I was a, I had to dig deep within my inner child. Mm -hmm. because as a kid I was a very free spirit okay. which my character is too like he goes to the to the beat of his heart you know he follows the beat of his heart um and I think as I've grown older I've become a little more afraid of, of you know making mistakes and such that I've I've lost that part of me but through this character I was able to reconnect 
um, to that fearless side. Uh, and, and, and yeah, just basically, I think every time that I'm like, why is Memo doing this? I was like, why would Fernando have done? Okay, that makes sense. So then let's go with that mo- 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 motivation. <laughs> yeah. is, there a, is there anything you would change about him or anything you would add more to him? If you could? Um, you know, honestly, no. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think the character, of course, like, I want to see more. I hope we get a se- second season so I can see where he's headed. Yeah. Uh, but I was just so happy and so blessed because nobody writes characters like Memo. You rarely see them on, on screen. And what I mean by, by that is you rarely see plus size um, characters who are not made fun of his, their weight or their appearance. Um, and even though, yeah, he is a comedic relief, the comedy comes from his essence and, and who he is at the core of his heart and his soul. You know, it, it's not about the looks. They never wrote a joke about me and my relationship with food. They never made a joke. Like nobody disrespects me because of my, my appearance, you know? And I appreciated that a lot. And um, on top of that, he's not perfect. You know, yeah, he's the best friend and everything, but he's not perfect by any means. He has his flaws, he makes mistakes, you know? Yeah. And he also has to figure out how to solve those mistakes. You know, I, I, I like that he, he, he's imperfect and, and that he also has a journey to go through and things to learn. So, so right now I'm really excited about having this That's character. Awesome. The thing that I would add is another season and maybe another one even more so we can actually yeah. see where he's heading. Right. Uh, where was this filmed and how was it with like all the protocols and everything with COVID? You know, um, so we actually were uh, very lucky to film at a resort in Puerto Vallarta in Mexico, okay. which was beautiful. Uh, but yeah, because of COVID, we all had to court, we lived together in a bubble for three months, the entire cast and the entire crew, which honestly was a blessing in disguise. I know it sounds a little crazy, but it was beautiful to be able to have once, first of all, we were living in the actual hotel that we filmed. So we were in the space, in the environment, 24-7. Wow. The whole time. And I think the fact that we were all living together, it, it created this very special bond between the cast members with the crew to the point that this became such a huge, important passion project for all of us that we all work even more in tandem to make sure that it was a beautiful story that we could share. Uh, and it helped our chemistry too. Um, I mean, we were each other's families for three months. Wow. Um, we we develop very personal and 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 heartfelt um, uh, relationships. It's it was beautiful. It was beautiful. You mentioned three months. How many episodes did you film? Ten. Okay. We wow. actually filmed the entire season. The exact number of days was sixty six because you know we don't work Sundays and things like that. So yeah. we finished the whole season in sixty six days, I believe. Wow. And uh, now this is uh, do you like how Apple drops it weekly instead of like? streaming it all at once i mean i definitely think it's something that we're not accustomed to anymore you know because yeah. everyone nobody does that anymore you know but i do think it's exciting that it keeps you you know uh, on your toes and it keeps you at the edge wanting more you know and, and keep coming back for more so i don't mind it i personally don't mind it i mean that's how we had to be for a while you know before streaming mm. services came around um I know people are kind of going crazy because they want to see what's next in our show, you know. Uh, um, but I'm like, good, let's keep you on your toes. So you keep coming back right. because it's, I promise it's going to keep getting better and better as the season progresses. Yeah. What's, been, uh, what's been the reaction so far with the episodes that have been released with, uh, like, your family and friends? Everyone loves it. I mean, that's the most exciting. And not even just my family and friends. Like, if you go on Twitter and you, like, search Acapulco Apple TV. Yeah you're going to see people like the audience's reactions from all over the world, which is also so exciting. It's not just the U S people are loving it. And I think the reason why is because our show is a very universal story Mm. that really showcases immigrants and the Latinx community and just people in general in a very positive light. You know, we don't even really have an antagonist in the story. You end up falling in love with every single character. We all make mistakes in it, you know, but no one is really evil to their core type of thing. Um, it's a feel good show and, and people are feeling good. And, you know, we've come to, right. it's been a tough year and a half. So the fact that now we have this type of material to lift us up again, people are, people are mm-hmm. loving it, which makes me really proud and very happy because that was the, the goal. How many episodes do you think need to be released before they, they get a decision if they want another season? Have you heard anything? Or Nothing. <laughs> 
even gonna <laughs> sing. It's the most nerve wracking thing of 2021. First, it was, right. am I gonna get this part? And then I got it. And now that we yeah. filmed it and did it, now it's like, are we getting a second season? I don't know. <laughs> um i don't know i really don't know i i'm not you know i don't have any insight on how apple makes those decisions and okay. and what it takes um but i hope we do i really hope um this becomes a fan favorite i mean a lot of the people in the press were saying that we're the next ted lasso so i hope that's true <laughs> you, it, that'll be a great thing if you are that would be a fantastic thing I mean, it was nice because um, our show premiered when the last episode of the second season of Ted Lasso dropped. So yeah. people were like, oh no, our one feel good show is gone. And Apple was like, hold on, don't worry. We have Acapulco for you. <laughs> and a lot of people are like, oh my God, this is going to be the next Ted Lasso. So hopefully, I'm putting that in the universe, we, that, that becomes a reality that we get, you know, we're able to reach that many people with this story and, and make them feel good too. That's great. Uh, Fernando, lastly, uh, how can the viewers and listeners find you on social media so they can find all the stories about the show? Yes, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Fernando Carza. I'm also on Twitter. Um, it's at Call Me Carza. That's where you can find uh, and follow what's what's going on. You might get some like behind the scenes stuff for, from the show from, from my social media. So definitely keep an eye out. Fernando, this was great. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank <laughs> you.